one year ago, ChatGPT was introduced to the world. And for content creators, the world was pretty much forever changed. Now, whether you are all in on AI with your content creation, whether you're using it for just certain areas of your business and your content creation, or whether you're still skeptical and wondering about its role in what you're doing, this podcast interview is for you. Today, we're joined by Julian Goldie, and Julian has committed the last year of his life to figuring out how to best implement AI into his business. Now, he runs a link building agency. He also has a popular YouTube channel where he shares a lot about ways he's using AI, and he's got no shortage of successes under his belt with AI, but he's completely transformed his business completely transformed what his team members do, how many team members he has on staff. In his words, he's 10x the productivity of his team. And he joins us today to talk about how to implement AI as content creators, as SEOs. Now, there are so many videos and so many interviews out there on the top five prompts for this and the six plugins to use for that. And those are all really, really good. But I wanted to take this interview a little bit of a different direction and make it as practical as possible. Try to really cut to the chase in terms of where it's best to use AI as a content creator, as a website creator, as a niche website owner, as an SEO in general. So Julian joins and shares how he's using AI for things like article outlines, uh, topical mapping, uh, sentiment analysis, scoring your content up against what uh, Google wants out of your content. We talk about the best plugins that you should use for different use cases. And we speak to the person who's feeling a little bit overwhelmed about where to go in this world of AI, what to implement, where to start, and how to tackle AI so that you're spending your, your time in the most efficient way possible. I think you're going to get a lot out of this, no matter what stage of AI you're at, whether you're full in full implementation, building sites at scale, which by the way, Julian is, or whether you're still skeptical and wondering exactly how to get your mind around where AI fits in your business. So I hope you enjoy today's podcast and happy one year anniversary to ChatGPT. Before we jump into the podcast, I wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Here's a short clip of Ferry from Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. This campaign got us big links in websites such as Lifehacker, Wells Online, Daily Record, and about 20 other news websites. Let me show you how we've done it. We knew that people will be flying a lot this summer, and we knew that journalists will be writing about this topic a lot. So, on behalf of our client, we put together a nice guide about how to fall asleep on the plane. Then we use Muckrack to find journalists who write about travel. Then we put our advice in a nice email and send the tips to the journalists. Within just a few days, the links started landing, securing our client natural placements in really big websites, just like this, this, and this. This is a great example about how you can leverage seasonal trends to earn links to a website. Anticipate what journalists want to write about at all times and give them the stories that they need. They will reward you with some great juicy links. I hope this is helpful. If you want similar link building PR campaigns for your website, head to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them now. Okay, welcome back to the Niche Pursuits podcast. My name is Jared Bauman. Today, I'm pleased to have Julian Goldie with us. Julian, welcome. Thanks for having me. It is great to have you here. Um, I, I'm so excited for this topic we're talking about today because I feel like we've been wanting to talk about this for a long time, and we haven't had a good person who can bring it all together and give us a lot of tangible tips about it. So today, we're talking probably, we'll probably venture in a lot of areas, but the focus is, is going to be on AI. So I, uh, I'm very excited to have you. You're, you're clearly an expert in this. Why don't you give us a background on yourself to start us off with, and then we'll... Uh, then we'll work our way into the uh, the episode details. Sure, yeah. So I run a link building agency with 50 people. I have a YouTube channel with over 45,000 subscribers. I talk a lot about AI and SEO and run all sorts of crazy experiments. I'm currently on a challenge to build 100 websites in 90 days using AI. And I'm 22,000 posts in, so we're getting there. We're making progress. A quick Backstory about me, I, I've been doing SEO for about seven years. I got into SEO when I was actually fired from my first three jobs. 
one of them as a cleaner. So it wasn't a great start. And then I was like, right, let's start looking for opportunities. Went on the lads' holiday out to Thailand. And when we came back, had the holiday blues big time. Combination of UK food, UK weather, fish and chips, our national dish gets boring quickly. So after that, I was like, right, well, I've got a choice, Thailand or fish and chips, Thailand or fish and chips. And I was like, well, I can get fish and chips in Thailand. So me and my mates, we set a pact and we said, right, we'll be in 12 months, let's move out to Thailand and, and have the freedom to live and work from anywhere in the world. And we did that through SEO. So that's where I am today. You know, I like a good fish and chips, but, you know, as, uh, as somebody from the States, we don't, we don't make it very well here. So I, I feel like it's probably not a good reason to just stay in, a, in an area just for the fish and chips. Yeah, that's it. Definitely. I mean, that's number one SEO tip today. If you're staying in your location just for fish and chips, <laughs> wrong mindset, guys. Well, we can just stop recording now. I think people have got a lot of value that's out of that. It. All right, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So... Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of things we could talk to you about. I, you have a storied career in SEO, link building. I know, actually, that's how we were first introduced, is, is to have you on maybe to talk about link building. But we have talked about that. I'm sure you'd add a ton of value. But we haven't really knuckled into the details of how someone can use AI, whether it's a chat GPT or others, to maybe automate parts of their business, to streamline parts of their business. So let me set the stage for today. And maybe you can start to kick us off here. Um, you're clearly super involved in AI. Uh, and, and a lot of the listeners here are going to be website builders, content creators. They're going to be side hustlers. And so learning how to maximize ROI, their return on their time investment, their monetary investment, but also learning how to do things they've never been able to do before with, uh, their, with, their, with their projects. Like all of these things are on the table when it comes to AI. Pa paint a picture for people. What's possible from a very high level for this type of person when it comes to using a chat GPT or just an AI in general? That's a good question. I mean, honestly, I've been astounded by what you can do this year in terms of AI. I mean, I run an SEO agency as well as doing SEO for my own websites. And I can say that you can literally create as much content as you want and it actually ranks. That's the mind blowing thing about this. Now, I think there are various ways to do that, and some are more risky than others, and maybe we can come on to that today. But I also think that in terms of just productivity, in terms of personal productivity, like if I look at the top five tools across all my companies, ChatGPT is in the top three already, and it's only been 12 months since it got released. So it's absolutely insane from improving your productivity to enhancing your learning to saving a bunch of time getting rid of a bunch of tools, managing less people, publishing more content, scaling up your websites. You can do anything you want. What, like, and I, I say this just, again, as more of an introductory, but I think of ChatGPT and AI as multiple buckets. You just touched on all of them, so that's why I was going to tackle it now. Like, It can make you more efficient, and it can make you more productive. It can do and replace things that you used to do or that you need to do. And then it can help you grow in areas that you couldn't grow before. So maybe before I'm capped to producing one or two articles a week, now I can do more than that. Or maybe before I was only able to do one or two articles, but instead of using AI to write them, I can now use AI to assist me so I can produce more content. Or I can also look at it from a standpoint of, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, but so many of the things I used to have to spend time on, now AI or ChatGPT can do for me. Like, which one do you want to tackle first, or, or which direction do you want to go with this conversation? Because I can see it going so many ways, but I want to lean on your expertise as to how we kind of open this up. I mean, probably best to start speaking about SEO first, but if you want later on, we can talk about some of the ways that it can just take your business to another level, like it has okay. for me this year. Yeah. I will make a note to come back to that, but let's start with SEO and AI. I want to let you start talking about the ways AI has impacted you from an SEO standpoint, and then we'll get into some questions and answers um, as we go. Yeah, so for me personally, I actually got into AI really heavily around January or February this year. I had Ryan Stewart, who's another SEO entrepreneur on my YouTube channel, and we had this interview where he did 90% of the talking, and he scared the life out of me. Because we were talking about AI and the future and what it means for, for agencies and SEOs. And you basically said like 90% of agencies and SEOs are going to get left behind with this wave of AI. Because if you, if you don't adapt and if you don't spend time and invest time understanding how to use it, then it's a serious threat. Because if you look, for example, 
But all the content writers out there, I don't, I don't know a single one that hasn't taken a massive hit this year. So I think it's totally changed the industry. And I think the sentiment around SEO content has totally changed as well. So if you went back 12 months ago and you had a, high, you know, a super authoritative site, most people would never dream of putting AI content on the website. It's just too risky. Most people th thought it didn't rank. Most people thought it wasn't at the quality that was required and everyone preferred human writers. Now I feel like there's been a whole wave thanks to these, these shameful YouTubers creating lots of content about AI. Who would do <laughs> such things? Who would do such things? And I think the whole... I, I, I really do think it's created a wave of people who are actually very open to AI and at least understanding how to use it because that triggers new ideas and new connections to build the business and, and scale, whether it's content, whether it's keyword research, whether it's top level maps, you can do as much as you want. Let's talk about scaling content with, with AI. That's the one you have mentioned the most. Um, you, 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 uh, you cited some crazy high number of, uh, of, of articles you've already gotten live on your new challenge. I think the flip side of it is a lot of people feel like AI content isn't quite good enough, especially in this world that we're now in with a helpful content update, changing the way that content looks and feels, changing the requirements of what in many ways it looks like ranks. So how are you using ChatGPT and AI to scale content out? And how are you doing it in a way that ranks and earns you money? Because I know that's a really important thing for you. Yeah, so there's two ways. Number one, we use tools like Autoblogging AI, and these are like one-click article generators where if you have enough authority on your site, aka enough backlinks, and you do the keyword research properly in terms of finding low competition keywords that you can easily rank for, and most people would never create content around those keywords because they're not high enough in terms of ROI. So if you were hiring a writer, maybe 50 or $100 per article, it just would never make sense to hire a writer to create these articles. But if you leverage AI and it just takes one minute to generate an article or even to generate hundreds of articles if you just bulk generate that content, then all of a sudden you can scale up the traffic that you get. You can rank for these easy, easy keywords that you can sacrifice a little bit of quality on simply because there's not much competition for those keywords and therefore you can drive a lot of traffic to your site through ads um, and monetize it that way. And on top of that, you can also bulk generate Amazon affiliate articles as well, using a very similar process. And you can rank roundup reviews or you can rank uh, product reviews. Now, the one caveat that I would say to that is that it's a lot of fun. It's amazing for YouTube case studies. It's great for experiments. People can follow along and see what we're doing and see the crazy results we're getting. Would I recommend that for everyone else watching right now? Absolutely not. I think it's very high risk. And I think that the quality is going to be nowhere near as high as uh, a, a top writer that you find. And I, I don't think writers have, if, if you're looking at a nine or a 10 out of 10 writer, then they've still got a place in the world because I don't see AI replacing them anytime soon. For example, if you had Brian Dean writing your content or you had uh, a one-click content generator, you're always going to pick Brian Dean every day of the week. I just feel like if you compare, say, an average mediocre writer, and we've all been there and hired one off Upwork who just does the bare minimum, creates a 500 word article, most of it is fluff, most of it is just padding to pad the word count so they get paid more. If you compare that, that versus an AI one click generator, usually the AI is going to win. Now, that's the first method that I use, and it generates content at scale, it definitely ranks. I've done plenty of case studies, for example. There was a website we used, uh, chipperbirds.com. And that's gone from like 200 or 250 clicks a day this time last year to, to getting thousands of clicks daily. Wow. Now, if we, and, and that's monetized with Mediavine ads and affiliate and that sort of thing. There's another method that I think is way more sustainable when it comes to creating content with AI. And that's actually just using ChatGPT, but giving a, a VA or a virtual assistant a checklist to run through when they edit the content. So you have a prompt that you use to generate the best possible output with ChatGPT. And then once you've got the first draft of that content, you can have a virtual assistant 
you don't need to pay them a lot because it's a very labor intensive but doesn't require a lot of thinking power and they just run through a checklist and they optimize it in the best way they can following your step-by-step instructions i think honestly that's probably the more sustainable way to do things because chat gpt generates something but then you you chisel it down and you filter it down and and the end product is a lot better now go on Oh, I was going to say, I love that you've broken those two apart because I think that when people first come on to AI, they, they, they don't understand that there's many ways to use it, right? And certainly a lot of our listeners are going to understand. You know, I think a lot of what you just said in the second scenario is kind of what's being referred to as AI-assisted maybe, and I'd like to kind of get your take on that. But um, anyways, just I, I want to just set the stage for people listening. Like, there's many ways that you can go about this. It doesn't have to be 100% AI content, and that's it. You move on, so... Absolutely. I mean, some of the safest ways to use AI are not necessarily actually creating the content with AI, but grading it. So, for example, if you look at the helpful content update recently, every time there's an update, Google always link to the helpful content guidelines, right? And occasionally they'll tweak them a little bit, update them a little bit. But they've got them published publicly on the website. Anyone can see those. Now, what you can do is you can copy the helpful content guidelines from Google paste them into ChatGPT and say, based on the content I've got, you give it the article that you've got, rate my content out of 10 based on Google's helpful guidelines. And then you're not even using AI to create new content. You're just grading and optimizing your content based on Google's helpful guidelines. And Mm -hmm. and ChatGPT is one of the best ways to do that because it's very uh, objective. Right, it can it can objectively look through your content and say, right, this is wrong, this is right, this matches Google's helpful guidelines, etc. You've waded into the category that I'm so excited to ask you some questions about, and that is, okay, let's say that I want to harness AI in a way that you're talking about with with more of a AI assisted role, right? And maybe I'm using a one click article generator and then heavily using AI on the front end and the back end of that. Maybe I'm actually taking my own content and using AI. Let's go through some of the different areas that you found it to be most effective. Maybe give people some tips or some things that most people miss on. I have a list I prepared for the podcast. I'll just re- I'm just going to roll it off to you. You can pick which ones you want to go after and ignore the ones right. that don't apply. But I've got um, article outlines and briefs. Um, I've got keyword research. And maybe more, more than just going to chat, you didn't say, give me article topics on computer monitors, but like actually kind of more advanced uh, uh, sentiment analysis, density analysis when it comes to keywords. Um, I've got exactly what you talked about, which is kind of scoring your articles up against whether it's other competitors or whether it's against Google Raider guidelines or helpful content guidelines. Um, I've got adding other additional items, like maybe it's media, maybe it's quotations, maybe it's citations. So these are just some general things I've listed. Like, how, Where does AI play in with that? Maybe cherry pick which ones y- you think are the most important there. Yeah, let's start with the content outline then. So with ChatGPT, what's a really powerful prompt, and I've tested this many times on my YouTube channel, and it ranks, is you can use ChatGPT and its plugins feature. So you got if you, if you pay for ChatGPT4, you'll get access to their plugins. You can install one plugin in particular called WebPilot. And what WebPilot does is it essentially connects you to Google. So you can say to ChatGPT, Based on my keyword, give me a content outline for a 2,000 word article. And what I want you to do is Google that keyword, scrape the top 10 competitors, give me some LSI keywords, some NLP keywords, tell me what headings to write, and tell me exactly how much content to write in each section, plus what to cover in each section. And it will basically give you it step by step. On top of that, you can ask it to include some external links. And you could even ask it to include some internal links. If you want the prompt, by the way, if you want the prompt for this, um, or you want to chuck it in the description or whatever, let me know and I can I can send it to you after the, the podcast. Perfect. But, That'd be awesome. I think people struggle sometimes with prompts and love a starting point. So that'd be great. Now, yeah. would you take that outline and do you plug it into a one-click uh, article producer or do you then continue to manipulate it a bit? Or is that better than that you write it? Like, what do you kind of end up with uh, from that? Yeah, so you can ask ChatGPT to actually write the content after that. So, you, so once you've got this optimized outline, you can say to ChatGPT, okay, write part one of the article, and then write part two of the article. Because if you ask it to write part one of the article 
uh, if you ask it to write the whole article in one, it's only going to be like 500 words. So ask it to write part one and then part two. And then from there, you can use your checklist or your editing process to filter it down. Now, do you find that when you have it write for you, that um, like, are you constantly having to reprompt it to, hey, I asked you to do part one and part one is done and now, now I have part two and, uh, oh, it's only 1,600 words, I wanted 2,000 words. Are there ways around that? In other words, getting the output to kind of match what you asked for. Yeah, I think it's an iterative process. And let's say you're using it every single day, then the prompt that you have on day one is going to be extremely different to the prompt that you have on day 90. Because each time you're going to spot something and you're like, oh, okay, that prompt is 80% of the way there, but what about if we just tweak it like this? And it's the same for everything. Like I use ChatGPT and DALI 3 for generating YouTube thumbnails. And there's always like something that I think, actually, I could sprinkle a little bit of magic here, a little bit of magic there, you know, maybe make it more colorful, get more options next time, or remove any text from the image next time, etc. So I think there's no one magical prompt, but you just iterate it and improve every single time. And one of the things that I do like, if you're, let's say, you're writing content for your personal website, and it's one that you really care about. So you don't just want ChatGPT to pump out some generic stuff. Right. I've actually trained ChatGPT based on my life story. So <laughs> I've written out my whole life story, and I've got this prompt that's ready to go. I can copy and paste it in there. I actually use the text expander to make it quicker. And it has everything about me. And then I'm like, right, create a social media post about me or write then this next email promoting whatever I'm trying to sell. And it's really, really powerful when you customize it to that, to that uh, detail. So let's talk about training for people who aren't familiar with it. And, um, it, you know, I, I have some more, maybe more advanced questions or probably you would still consider them to be pretty basic. But um, I'll tell myself they're advanced. But <laughs> when it comes to training <laughs> oh, yeah. ChatGPT, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. When it comes to training ChatGPT, I think a lot of people have heard of this but don't really understand it. And there's some nuance to it. What does training ChatGPT look like? Um, and let's go back to our article brief example here. And if I wanted to train ChatGPT to act more of a certain way, to not just act in its generic format, what would be some examples of how I might want to train it before I gave it, say, an article prompt or something else? Yeah, so if you want to train it on very generic things, you can actually insert custom instructions into ChatGPT4, and then you don't even need to prompt it again or train it again because it's already built in. So, for example, for me, if I'm writing content, I always like every single sentence to be on a new line, kind of like Neil Patel style, right? So it's super easy to read. The readability is nice. Or writing at eighth grade level so that it's as simple as it possibly can, be and it's going to be very easy to comprehend for anyone. So what you can actually do is plug in custom instructions, which is inside the settings in ChatGPT4, and you just put all these things inside there, so that when you use ChatGPT4, it's, it's using these instructions by default and it's already trained, pre-trained. So yeah, so for example, every sentence, new line, nothing cringe, no fluff. Under every subheading, make sure that sentence has value. Introductions, keep them short, hook people in, use open loops, etc., to make sure people read till the end. These things you can just insert in custom instructions, and that's going to save you a ton of time. That's great. That's good feedback. What about I've heard people train it like, I want you to act like you are an, you know, an expert in this field. I want you to, like, is that effective in your mind? Does it help? to do that. And the second question would be, do you ever, before you say, would you generate an article brief, say, here's an example of a awesome article I've written before. Now go do all your work, you know, your research or whatever in that vein. Do, do, you know, so kind of two questions there, acting it to act a certain way and then, uh, or asking it to act a certain way and then asking it to mimic something you've already done. Yeah, so when it comes to acting, asking it to act in a certain way, I think personas are very powerful with ChatGPT. So there are discords, uh, there's a free one called uh, Stunt Spot, and it's a free discord. And inside there, you can get access to personas like Winston Churchill or Elon Musk or Iron Man, crazy personas. And when you plug these prompts, which are 
really, really complex. When you actually look at the prompt, half of it doesn't make sense. It's not written in it's written in English, but it's not written in a way that a human can comprehend it. And it unlocks a totally different feel to the way that ChatGPT will interact with you. I remember seeing one uh, with David Goggins. You could basically have a conversation with David Goggins on ChatGPT, and it totally transforms the way ChatGPT interacts with you. Hey, just a quick break. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Just a quick reminder that today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Now, I've got a short clip from Ferry with Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. What a masterpiece PR link building campaign with 20 links in big publications such as The Sun, Express, Mirror, Wales Online and Still Landing I would say this campaign is a massive success. We told the press that people should turn on their heating this summer if they want to save money next winter. And we landed over 20 links in national and regional UK publications for our boiler client. That's crazy. The campaign hook was pretty clever. It is a known fact, at least in the boiler trade, that if you keep your boiler off for many months, it might rust and it might get you into trouble if you keep it turned off from spring to next winter. We therefore advise the press with an expert commentary piece on behalf of our boiler client that people should turn on their boilers this summer just when the heat wave is in full swing. This way they can avoid a boiler failure next winter and save money. Massive publications picked up our story, including The Sun, Express, Mirror, Wales Online, and a few more dozen publications, giving our client links, lots of links, and lots of happiness hormones. No wonder that so many journalists covered our story, as this headline is a massive link magnet to their audience. This case study highlights the fact that a clever hook can be applied to any insight or story to make a campaign more successful and more compelling to journalists. Can you imagine when people see this headline in the news, you should turn on your boiler this summer. There is no way they would not click on it. I would click on it. So this was the hook and this is why this campaign was so successful. I hope this video inspires and shows you what's possible with a clever hook. Like what you just heard and are looking for similar link building PR campaigns for your website? Just go to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them today. Do you find that, and this might be better served at a different time, but I have on my list, so I'll ask you, what, um, how, when should someone consider utilizing the API access to a chat GPT versus initiating in the chat window, right? Like having all this done in the chat window. And uh, cause there's API access, so you can start to use it from other areas, but you know, what's your experience with that? And maybe advice for people listening. Yeah, the people that I know that are using the API, usually it's when they're trying to scale. So if, if they're trying to publish maybe 100, 200 articles a day, you can easily do it with the API and you plug it into a spreadsheet, for example, and then for every keyword, you've got a new row for every single keyword and you've got the API blasting out the content outline, blasting out the whole article for hundreds of keywords. And you just have these prompts that deliver the best possible quality at that scale. I think that's one of the best ways to do it. And then also you can plug these intelligent APIs, for example, like ChatGPT4's API into tools like Harper and it's basically like having a more intelligent um, personal assistant. So Harper AI is a free extension on Chrome. You can plug in your API and it will give you better outputs than say if you were using ChatGPT 3.5. Okay, um, circling back, you know, we had just basically gotten into article outlines and article briefs. There's, there's so many other things, you know, to use ChatGPT for. Uh, ChatGPT 4? <laughs> F-O-R, <laughs> or ChatGPT, the, the, the number four. Um, what other ones do you think are best applied for content creators? Um, you know, I'd mentioned, uh, you know, density analysis and uh, expert citations. and But uh, seriously, the floor is open to you because you're the expert here. I'd want, I'd want to hear more from you about the best applications. Yeah, so I actually did a, I did a video on 50 ChatGPT prompts. And that's when I realized that I'd condensed 12 months of work into a 50-page ebook, and 
you can basically do anything with it. And I'll give you some examples. So one of my favorite ways to use it is topical maps. I'm sure you're familiar with like Corey Togberg's sort of idea of a topical map and yeah. how you can build out topical authority by just covering everything that an authority site would cover in that niche. So for example, if you've got a prompt to like give me 30 semantically relevant topics based on my niche, and that will be the starting point for the topical map. And basically what it will do with ChatGPT is, let's say you're in the bird's niche, it will give you 30 different topics, sub-niches, that you can cover within the bird's niche. Then what you can do is say to ChatGPT, give me 30 relevant but different keywords with different search intent for each topic. So let's say one of the subtopics generated was bird migration. So you can say to ChatGPT, based on the subtopic bird migration, give me 30 keyword ideas that are different and have different search intents. And then you can build out a topical map so quickly within 30 minutes. And that is something that I think a lot of people listening might struggle with because uh, you know, going all the way back to this helpful content update and the way that people build sites, many people will just go and grab low competition keywords, but miss areas of, say, covering a complete topical silo because they're just going after low competition keywords. And something like this will actually help you round out an approach as a new website, even if you're not building at scale, right? You're not going down that route, but you want to just get a framework in front of you for what you're trying to write about. Um, that can make sure you're covering, we'll say, all or most of the topics in the, um, in the niche. Um, let me ask you now, I'll ask you now, uh, in general, like, how are you publishing content and then adding all of the additional features into it? Like, can, can AI help you with adding imagery? Can AI help you with internal linking? Can AI help you with tables and other forms of uh, richer media? And then how are you using AI for that? Or are you having um, an assistant or a, you know, a VA do that for you? Yeah, so if you look at the content, for example, on chipperbirds.com or any of the new ones that we've done, the content generated by autoblogging AI has videos, images, tables, bullet points, headings, etc., all formatted inside the article. So it's all ready to go and it's all sort of packaged in a nicely formatted way. And um, I'm talking a lot about autoblogging AI, but there's no one, one tool that can do this. So for example, Agility Writer, Koala AI, they all do this same sort of stuff. When it comes to ChatGPT, what you can actually do with WebPilot is you can say, include some YouTube videos, format it in Markdown so that you've got the headings in there, bold the most important words, include some relevant tables, add some images maybe sourced from Unsplash, you know, copyright free image website, and it will basically format the content in a really nice, easy to understand way. that has got all your headings, all your tables, all your images, all your videos inserted inside there. Now, if you did want to generate even more images, you can use DALI 3 inside ChatGPT. And this was just released a couple of weeks ago, but you can generate copyright free images using ChatGPT and DALI 3. And you just give it the prompts and it'll, it, it will give you like four different options. And if you like one of them, but you want to tweak them slightly, then you can go back and forth with ChatGPT and wrestle with it a little bit. If you don't have access to that, you can actually use Bing.create. And Bing Create is a free tool that's powered by DALI 3. So you can go on there and generate images as well. And these are way nicer than DALI 2. DALI 2's images were pretty nasty. But DALI 3, yeah, it's, it's genuinely nice. Yeah. What um, what about talk about the differences in for for people listening who um, are on the fence or have not delved into the differences in say Chat GPT three versus three point five versus four, and I'm specifically talking to uh, one use case is the person who's like I don't know if I really want to pay for Chat GPT four right now like is it really worth it or not? Maybe the second use case would be are there still circumstances even as a paying user where I'd rather use three point five and then when I'd rather use four? Okay. I mean, number one, if you're running a business, I don't want to be harsh, but I would say for $20 a month, 
you're crazy not to do it. You're crazy not to do it because it's just going to save you dozens of hours and it will save your team dozens of hours. And just by upgrading, you get access to so many more features. I think, for example, the plugins feature, you can't even do content outlines properly if you don't have chat GPT-4. So I think, honestly, if any tool that you get in your business is an investment. So if you're hesitant to buy chat GPT-4, I don't want to trigger anyone here but I would say maybe potentially just look at your mindset and look at okay do you consider these things an investment or are you just trying to be stingy but it will cost you in time which is way worse in business next up when it comes to having chat GPT-4 already but considering whether to use 3.5 or not so chat GPT 3.5 is still a lot faster which means that for some tasks for example like the topical maps it's going to be way faster, but just as effective to use 3.5. And let's say you have to run through 30 sub-niches and get keywords for all of those sub-niches with the topical map. Well, it's going to be much faster to do with that with ChatGPT 3.5. And they're both large language models. They both understand semantics, which means that they can both build out topical maps. So I think 3.5 wins the game there. How do I determine like what works well in 3.5 and what's better for 4? Like is there um is there like a some sort of guiding metric that someone can use? You talked about speed, but um what other things go into it? Like how do I know that 3.5 will work just as well as 4 for certain tasks? It's a good question. I say I don't want to BS you and tell you like I know the all the answers to that. I don't genuinely know. I just know from my own experience and what works for me and when I look at the output from ChatGPT 4 it's substantially more intelligent, yeah. but it's not quite as fast as 3.5. And when I look at 4 as well, you get so many more features inside ChatGPT. So you get Dali, the plugins. Um, I think you get Bing browsing now as well. So there's all these other features that are unlocked with ChatGPT 4. And I think as well, the token limit is much higher in ChatGPT 4. I don't want to say that's absolute facts. I think... If we had Jamie from Joe Rogan, he would pull it up and check it for us. But essentially, <laughs> that's, that, I, I'm pretty sure it's got a higher token allowance, which means that you can insert more words into the conversation without it breaking. Yeah, and that's one of the drawbacks, I think people will say, of ChatGPT versus, say, a Claude. Is a Claude is another AI chat tool uh, you know that you can use it's got a higher token count which basically means you can pump more content into it and also get maybe more out of it but we'll save that conversation for a different time you've mentioned several times now plugins i mean i feel like for people who are used to just using chat gpt as a chat uh as a chat ai plugins opens the door to so much more maybe rifle i don't want to go too youtube here uh, your top five chat GPT plugins, but like rifle through some of your favorites, especially as it relates to content creators and SEOs and, and maybe, um, and maybe why I, I, my hope here is that somebody listening will be like, Oh yeah, I use that one. Oh yeah. I use it. Oh, I don't use that one. Let me go look into that one. You know? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I mean, honestly for me these days, chat GPT is so more sophisticated than it was. So the only plugin I really use consistently with SEO is WebPilot because it's just great for scraping the internet and that gives you an advantage. But I used to use Argo AI, which generates images inside ChatGPT, but then it installed Dali 3 and it's like, okay, why am I gonna use Argo AI? And then I've used some other ones for like diagrams. So for example, if you're trying to create a link magnet on your website and you wanna, ins you might be doing a case study of data that you've sourced from all over the web and you're like, right, if I rank for this keyword, it's going to attract a lot of backlinks naturally. For example, let's say you want to rank for a keyword like uh, ChatGPT statistics 2023. And you know, right, if you rank for it, journalists are going to find the article and link to your site. Well, you can insert all the data on that page from all the case studies, but then you can turn that data into diagrams using uh, some of the diagrams on... on uh, on ChatGPT plugins. I kind of want to find the plugin that I'm talking about now. I think it's just called like <laughs> diagrams or something like that. Let me have a look. You yeah, talk about web Whim pilot. Whimsical diagrams oh, is called. Whimsical, Whimsical diagrams. diagrams. Yeah. And then you've got other things like mermaid chart, wolfram. These can all generate diagrams. And also, um, 
chat data analysis. So what you can do is take data, turn it into diagrams, format your blog nicely so that it's more of a linkable asset. You mentioned WebPilot, and I've used WebPilot. It's great. It basically gives you the ability to kind of feed ChatGPT for an article, and instead of getting the, the response, which is, I actually you know, can't crawl the internet, and um, unless it's been in my database since September of 2021, I don't know what it's about. Instead of getting that, it says, oh, okay, yeah, I'll go read that article, right, which is great. I don't know how much experience you have, but what would be the use case for using ChatGPT and the WebPilot plugin versus the Bing chat where you can go use Bing, be on an actual web page, and then interact with the Bing chat on that page, right? Two different use cases, and um, both are using the underlying ChatGPT uh, LLM, but different ways to actually apply that. Yeah, I've looked at Bing. I did try it briefly, and then uh, last time I checked, and this was a few months ago, you had to use Edge. You had to install yeah, the so. browser Edge, and I was like... There's no way I'm coming off Google Chrome. Are you crazy? It's, what are we doing here? My, I don't even know what Edge is. And then also, and it might have changed now. You know, they might, you might be able to use it directly inside Google Chrome now. But then the other thing I found was it was quite limited in terms of the results that we got. And I couldn't customize it in the way that I can with the plugins on ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just lazy and I, I try and focus on the most efficient workflow possible. But I honestly found the web pilot was giving me better results with less messing around. Let's move on and move past content, which is, you know, in many ways the bedrock of website creators, right? Like, so a lot of people listening are going are gonna to have gotten a lot of value out of that. But, um, you know, we've touched on a couple of times, like in the helpful content update world, there's an increasing focus on other elements that you want to bring to your website. Uh, whether it's um, compounding your content into other social media, whether it's um, you know adding various things to your website in the form of uh, EEAT, whether it's going out and creating additional signals and helping expand your footprint online. Like there's so many things that we could be doing beyond just creating good content every day, and probably need to be doing. So where's ChatGPT's role in that? I'm transitioning out of content creation and into all the other areas that a website creator might need to think about nowadays. And what can we use ChatGPT for to help us out there? So this is where ChatGPT really shines, I think. And just to give you a little background here, back in January, we had a team, a whole marketing team that we actually got rid of. So we had a five-person team, marketing manager, ads buyer, video editor, um, yeah, YouTube script writer, etc., we had all of that team, and obviously that's a big overhead. It slows things down because you're managing a lot of people. It's quite stressful to manage that team as well. And we actually just got rid of that team, and we're like, right, let's leverage AI and move 10 times faster. And if you look at the growth of my YouTube channel or my overall brand this year, it's absolutely skyrocketed because of this. Because with AI, for example, you can take my content that I've already got and chop it up into emails or chop it up into social media updates, and then you just give the right systems and the right prompts to your team. So, for example, I've replaced that five-person team now with just myself and a couple of superhuman BAs who are empowered with ChatGPT and the systems I give them. So if you look, for example, at my YouTube videos, well, I have a VA that actually takes those YouTube videos, chops them up into tweets, tweets about 15 to 30 times a day, and now we're reaching a million and a half people on Twitter in the last 28 days. And it's absolutely insane. So ChatGPT is very, very powerful for, for taking your content and chopping it up. The same with the emails. We push out daily emails every single day. We've got an email list of about 26,000 people now. And with ChatGPT and the virtual assistants that we have, they can pump out an email every single day, have seven lined up at all times, so that we've got a week in advance of emails ready to go. Open rates have never been higher. English in the emails is pretty much perfect. Click-through rates on the emails are beautiful. And it's like, wow, 12 months ago, I would never have imagined that you could empower a team like that and, and take their performance to another level without all the stress of having these large overheads and expensive people. And, and I have absolute respect 
for the people that did leave our company because of that situation. But has it taken us to another level? Absolutely. Let's get in Julian's head for a second here. And uh, I'm selfishly asking you this. I'm busy, overworked, and um, have a lot that I'd like to share, but not enough time to do it. What, what is your role in all this? You just talked about how to take something and extrapolate on it like you did, and how you basically, yeah. from a marketing side of things, it's you and a small team of really, really awesome VAs. Like, what do you do? Do you just come up with an idea, and then just what comes out of that? Like, I just want to help people understand where, what they can see themselves in in their role and how they can add teammates to help them make that a reality. Yeah, so for me, what I do is I, I set up 90-day goals every quarter, and I'm like, right, here's what I want to achieve over the next 90 days, and here's how I'm going to do it. So, for example, one of our goals this quarter is to take my YouTube transcriptions and at least pump out one or two of those a week into blogs on the website. So what I'll do is I'll say to our ops manager, who has an army of VAs, I'll say to her, right, here's what I want to do. Here's the idea that I have. How would you implement it? And what's reasonable in terms of the publishing rate? And then she'll go off. She'll train a team on how to do it and implement it that way. And I think that's the best way. Is like all the ideas come from me. But if you have a, a right-hand woman or, or man that can implement them, it's a really, really amazing system. And, and you just save so much stress. Sounds like there's some upfront work. But you, in many ways, and I don't want to oversummarize it, so you know, everybody listen, don't take it this way, but in many ways, you talked about how it used to be having a, team, a marketing team of five, how content creation was about kind of paying a per word writer, how, and you still have staff. Matter of fact, perhaps maybe even more VAs than before. What you've done is you've come up with systems, prompts, established Ooh. checks and balances, and you've replaced what used to be your overhead or your team with just different team members. And so, I, and I think it's important to, 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 for people to hear that. Like, it doesn't sound like you're a one-man operation pumping out all this stuff just because of ChatGPT. You are highly efficient and way more effective and perhaps spending less on your overhead, but still involving a team. It's just a different team under different circumstances and different frameworks. Do I have that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Different team, different systems different payment rates negotiated but maybe a 10x level of productivity and efficiency genuinely i would say if you look at my subscribers on youtube for example this time last year we might have had like one or two k subscribers now we're up to 46k and it's growing same on twitter we might have reached maybe one or two thousand people on twitter a month now we reach a million and a half the same with the email list everything it's all about yeah just you have the idea then you build up the systems and the people that can implement it and you make sure as well that you have a way of measuring and managing okay are they hitting the kpis are they doing everything that's required yes or no and if no okay what do we need to change and manage better as we start to kind of wrap this up i want to ask you to breathe into the person who's listening who is just using ChatGPT here and there, you know? It's kind of like a little thing that when they think about it, they boot it up, they chat with it on, th but it's not a part of their workflow, right? It's not a big part of their workflow. And I want to give you a scenario where they're normally the person who is continuing to operate the way you were before you had Ryan Stewart on your podcast, right? When Ryan came on and said, if you're not going all in on AI and its impacts, how it can help you as a content creator, you're gonna get left behind. And let's say that this person is still operating that way. Maybe they understand it, they know it, but they're not using it as a core part of their business. What would you recommend? How would, like, what are the different pieces they should plug in? They're still the ones doing the, the, the content research. They're still the ones writing all the articles. They're still the ones who are adding graphics and images and pulling all that together. Like it's, and, and what I'm trying to get at is this is going to feel very overwhelming, right? This last 45 minutes of interviewing is going to be like, oh my gosh, I want to do it all and I can't do any of it because I'm overwhelmed. I'm paralysis <laughs> by analysis, if you will, right now. Just the so, head's explodes. The head's exploding, right? Like, my head's exploding, yeah, and I yeah, use yeah. AI in a lot of features, right? Like, there's a lot of people <laughs> listening who are like, oh, my goodness. And, and so, like, let's talk to those people, and let's kind of try to wrap up and bring them back. Like, where do we start? Where do people who are uh, sold on this idea start without having to walk away? And because of how much information you just shared – because of how many possibilities are on their mind, they actually end up don't take, uh, not taking action. Like, let's help them avoid that, and where do they start? Okay, so first place I would start is just do a time audit 
Identify what tasks you're doing, how long they're taking, and where most of your time is going. Now from there, you're probably going to find that 80% of your time is spent doing one or two tasks. Now you figure out what those one or two tasks are, and that's when you start using AI and figuring out the right systems to automate it. So, for example, if you're spending most of your time on content creation, and that's where you know, you're spending 10 or 20 or 30 hours a week, that's going to be the highest leverage system that you can automate with AI. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to automate the whole process with AI. It might be that you just score your content and improve it that way. It might be just that you get a first draft from ChatGPT and then edit it down in a really neat and and and, um, and, and nice way, etc. And I think that's the best way to do it. You can't do all of this at once. It'd be totally overwhelming and it would probably be very demotivating. Just pick the highest leverage thing that you can do, the place where you're spending the most time and then go from there. And then, you know, you might say, right, well, over the next 90 days, I'm going to implement one new system every month. And if I do that, that's going to be progress and it's going to save me dozens of hours. I don't have to do it all. That would be mental. But I can make progress in the right direction. And that's far better. I love that approach. And I'll, I'll double down on that and say whatever system you commit to implementing, get it done and out the door. Because it's so, and I speak from experience here, it's so easy to be like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get AI involved in this world of my business. And I'll get like halfway done and it won't be quite right. And then I'll get busy and then I'll leave it. And I won't have anything I'm using yet, right? So, uh, you know, like I, I just figure out where you're, it can have the biggest impact and then make sure that you're, whether it's once a month or every couple months or whatever it is, you're actually utilize, utilizing a process as part of it. That. That's such a great tip. Um, part of a lot, if people are sitting there and they're like, yeah, my head's exploding, but I wanted to learn so much more. I avoided a lot of the topics that I know, Julian, you cover really well and really advanced in your on your YouTube channel. Like, I know... I. Believe me, I would have liked to spend the whole thing talking about how you have published 220,000 articles <laughs> in the last 90 days and how you've grown chipper birds to where it's at and all that stuff. But you've covered a lot of that. And so I really wanted to try to tackle this interview from a standpoint of, hey, the content creator that I think is the average niche pursuits listener, like where can we get specific questions answered from you all in one spot? But if you're the type who wants to hear more... <laughs> then you should go binge uh, Julian's channel. But tell us where we can catch up with you and find you. Tell us where we can interact with you. You've got a lot of stuff going on. You've mentioned Twitter. You've mentioned YouTube. You've got an agency. Tell us where we can follow along with what you're doing. Yeah, the best way to follow along is on YouTube. I publish videos pretty much daily. And they're very actionable. No fluff, no filler. And they're based on what I'm actually doing. So there's no telling people what to do but not doing it myself. It's all stuff I'm actually doing and working on. And you know, you can see the proof of the results so far. Ah, great. Um, Julian, thank you so much for coming by. I, I, we could have gone five hours, honestly, but next we'll time we do, a, we, we we'll do, do it again. Yeah. Hour podcast. <laughs> just a 24 hour live stream. We'll just, um, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Hey, we, I bet you have enough information on AI to fill. A, a, I don't know about 24 hours, but a long podcast. We'll, we'll put it that way. Um, hey, this stuff is changing so fast. I imagine we will have you back on to uh, maybe update and stuff like that. And so it's a good reminder that AI is always changing by the time this comes out. Some tweak that Julian said might be a little different. That's okay. It's the concepts that matter the most. And I think that's what, what, you'll, get, what you'll gain the most from by implementing. So, um, man, thanks again for coming by. And until next time, talk soon. Thanks. Today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Here's a short clip of Ferry from Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. What a crazy campaign. How to sleep on your back. This campaign got us links in Huffington Post, Glamour Magazine, Mirror, and lots of other great news publications. Let me show you how we've done it. It was so simple. Our sleep client provided us with expert commentary about how to train yourself to fall asleep on your back. They also gave advice on why it's best to sleep on your back. Once we've had this information, we went to Muckrack and searched for journalists that consistently write about sleep and well-being. We've sent these journalists the advice provided by by the client and within one day the links started flowing in. Glamour Magazine, a DR81 website, picked it up. Huffington Post, DR88, Mirror UK, DR90, a massive avalanche of links blasted through our client's website with this simple yet effective campaign about how to sleep on your back. I hope this inspires and I hope you'll use this technique to land massive links to your or your client's website.
Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Just a final reminder that it was brought to you by Search Intelligence. And if you're looking for link building PR campaigns for your website, just head over to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them today. Cheers.